thing uh, that um, I may, I definitely give you this impression of, uh, about this curve. So that was uh, uh, about, not intentionally. Um, uh, so this, the, the, remember that surface we talked about this one, uh, we talked about last time. Um, and that was, uh, we ended up computing uh, on limit. Where's that thing? Uh, yeah, this is the function. The limit is uh, uh, if along the x and y axis, limits are zero. And the limit along the parabola is uh, one half. Okay, so if we look at the picture, then we definitely see the, uh, the former, the, the cross of the x and y axis. It's, it's not visible here. Um, for, on the graphs on, on the right, but if I just rotate this thing, it should be uh, should be visible. So I rotate it uh, this way. Okay, so so the cross the cross is visible, just like on the uh, hyperbolic parabola, there is there is a cross, and then there is stuff happening around it. But uh, if we look at from above, uh, the uh, the the cliffs. The cliffs. What what can you say about the cliffs based on the the cliff? You see cliff on the right, cliff on the on the left. Okay, so based on the limit, the, that this limit, the second one, the last one. Uh, what can you say about those two cliffs? Are they uh, vertical asymptotes? No, 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 uh, no. The, there's a, there's a vertical drop. Uh, from zero to one half, right? So the cross on the on the zero, zero level zero, and then uh, the height, uh, if you approach along the parabola, is one half, and that's the drop. It's not a, uh, an asymptote, but it is a vertical drop. Okay, so um, so I, that's why I call it a clip. Um, uh, but that's not the picture. The, the Excel is trying to connect this into a one nice curve, and it, it only has two, these points to work with. So and it does connect it into into uh, an, an unbroken uh, surface, okay? But the limit tells us otherwise. What do you see? The limit when you approach along the parabola is equal to one half. Okay. So what does it mean for the picture? I mean, it definitely means it's it's discontinuous there. Right, right, right. Uh, but suppose you're walking on the on that orange cliff. What happens? Oh. And you keep walking. Yeah, you fall off and you land. Uh, do you do you really fall off if, if you, uh, you you kind of you have one hand one foot on the cliff and the other foot is maybe hanging down? It is yeah. If you have some any kind of size, but the point is, uh, and then what? Suppose you don't fall, then what? You keep going at the same elevation you were. Well, on the that's that's the exactly. There is no there is no passage here technically. Uh, you, you can say that you can just continue on walking like this, okay? Because the limit is one half. Whichever direction we, we approach, this or that, gives me uh, uh, altitude one half, which means that there is a uh, there is a um, there is there there is no break. Uh, there is no uh, there is no well. There is a cliff, but one, not two. So this is. Let me try to make that picture. So uh, roughly, it looks like this is the uh, so the cross like this, uh, parabola, so vertical drop, okay, and then, and then there is a cliff, oh, not a, it's not a cliff, it's not a cliff, this is the parabola, and, and the, the height is one half, so if you approach it from the bottom, you will have to be on, on level zero, okay, but if you approach along the uh, parabola, it will be at the top, and you will be at the height one half, and, and there, is a, there is a, roughly, I would do it like that, so there's only one cliff, this is the vertical cliff, Elsewhere, the cliff is not vertical. Okay, so I guess this is close to what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so uh, so there is a there is no passage. Uh, yeah, uh, so there is no passage because the graph continues on maybe like this over on the other side. There is no there is no passage uh, because of the vertical drop. The, uh, the Excel cannot cannot recognize that uh, that, that connection over here. Probably contribute into, into that, but uh, there is actually so it's not a cliff. There is actually I, I looked up a word. Uh, I remember it's called uh, a promontory. So it's a uh, like elevated area of land protruding into either lowland or uh, a water. 
if it's water, then it's also peninsula. But 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 in this particular case, it's uh, it's a promontory. There there is a cliff, so one point cliff. But elsewhere, it's not a cliff because cliff has to be a, a vertical or almost vertical, and it's not. So so but it does kind of protrudes into into uh, a low area, which is which is elsewhere. Okay, so that's that's I think that's what that uh, you can you can observe. Yeah, so as you can see, this one gets over here. It gets flatter. Uh, so the height is is uh, the height hi highest area is is going backwards in the, along that plot. Okay, so all right. So that's that's one thing to to correct. Uh, it is totally fits into our next topic, which is derivatives. Um, and um, well, they remember the main point about the derivatives or, or derivatives or or, or uh, continuity or anything on limits. Uh, is that we cannot study functions of two variables, one variable at a time. It's simply in, in, insufficient. Uh, the, uh, where did I state that theorem about, not this one, uh, about the limits, so, uh, uh, I mean, maybe I didn't. Uh, so this is the definition of the limit, and then the statement of the theorem. Uh, mm -hmm. no, no, not here. Okay, so it's not it's still not about the derivatives. So uh, the limit, as and as well as the continuity, the same same issue pretty much, is uh, uh, to be addressed in this fashion based on the distances or uh, magnitudes. Same thing. Okay, so so the convergence is like this like this, uh, but uh, um, the convergence, uh, and, and then if, if, if you have a convergence of, of this kind, so based on the distances, then, let me state that theorem, so theorem, if, so lim uh, f of x, uh, f of x, uh, uh, let's say, let's say, let's make it two-dimensional, f of x, y is equal to L, x, y goes to A, D, then, and then naturally, at this point, I hope that this, this statement is, is quite obvious, limit f of x, B. So we make it one variable. We, we fix the uh, variable for of y. x goes to A. So it is one uh, variable limit. B is fixed, which means that this is entirely a function of one variable. This is limit of one variable. It is entirely calculus one. The limit is equal to L. And naturally, if we fix the other one, the result is the same. Uh, y goes to B. F of Y. Uh, I'm sorry. F of F of uh, A. Y also equal to L. Okay. Okay, so so always saying that if we the limit is equal to L, if we approach from arbitrary direction as well as uh, along arbitrary curves, then if we decide to approach it along these two axes, then the result is the same. So it's, it doesn't say a lot. Okay, so like this, along the x-axis uh, or, or along the y-axis, that, that's how we approach. So uh, the the point is uh, is the. Uh, uh, um, Uh, the question then is about the, as with, with all theorems, the question is uh, the, the converse. What is the converse of this theorem? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I would say that if the, you do like the, bottom two, if those do not equal L, then the limit of xy going to AB of f of xy would not equal L. No, you're sure it's, no, it's not what you said, it's not, it's called the contrapositive. It's the same statement, only you, you, you go uh, A implies B, you replace it with not B implies not A. So that's if you not equal this not equal or that not equal will be will be negation of the statement, 
and then the limit does not exist is negation of the first state. That, that's the contrapositive. So contrapositive form of the original theorem. The converse is when you reverse this way. B implies A. Uh, I don't think we have discussed this, uh, uh, so um, uh, example of a contrapositive statement, uh, well, uh, how about from calculus 1, we have uh, um, uh, Fermat's theorem, if the, uh, you have a differentiable function and it's, and it's a local maximum, then the derivative is zero. What's the contrapositive? If the derivative isn't zero, it doesn't have a local extreme in there? If it's differentiable. No, that's again kind of positive. Oh, they said kind of positive. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So what's what's the converse? I'm sorry. Yeah. Converse. What's the converse of the of your must there? It's not true because we know that it's it's not true. Well, it's not true, but you, you still can say it. <laughs> um, if uh, if the derivative, if you have a differentiable function, and if its derivative at x equals a is zero, then it must have a local extreme of it. Yeah, that's right. So, um, uh, uh, and it, it, it is not true. The example of which, the counter example of which is what? Y equals x cubed. X cubed, the example of, uh, that proves that it's, it's not, not enough for the derivative to be equal to zero in order to have a maximum middle point. Okay, so uh, some of the converses are true. Uh, one is the converse is the, if, if you take the Pythagorean theorem and if you state it carefully, the, and, uh, which Pythagorean theorem pretty much says that you have, a, uh, if you have a right triangle and then, and then a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, uh, where c is the opposite of, of the right angle. However, there's a converse. It usually doesn't come up. If this, this equation is satisfied, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then the, uh, the angle opposite to c will be 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the, sometimes the converse is true, sometimes it is not. So is it true for this theorem? Which is let me state it if, if you if you are uh, uh, concerned. So suppose this is these are satisfied. Does it mean that the original statement is satisfied? So the limit along the uh, the the axes exist and equal to each other. It doesn't mean that the limit uh, the general limit two dimensional limit uh, exists and equal to that. I imagine no, right? Because there's lots of other ways to approach the limit. Right. So, well, there you go. The the, the, the answer is no. And the this example is 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 the uh, yes is the counter example, just like x cubed example, a counter example to the converse of the Fermat theorem. Uh, this is the this example is the counter example to the converse of of this theorem. Okay. Okay. So, and, and once again, we 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 uh, take this understanding and bring it to derivatives, which is pretty much the same. Uh, uh, idea, except we are really going to be using a lot of, 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 of partial derivatives, which are simply derivatives with respect to two, two particular directions. We also have to know ahead of time that it's not going to happen in terms of, it's not going to be sufficient. So just two directions pre chosen ahead of time uh, and, and take the rate of change in those directions will not be enough. And uh, once again, we could pick this example if you like, because uh, uh, that, that's not the best example, unfortunately. I, I think I I have two. Wait, wait, where is this one? Uh, oh, okay, so maybe it was two. Uh, okay, so uh, no. That was, I, I want to show you one, once again. The I want to see the cube again. Now let me see the cross. I want I want to see the cross so that we can appreciate uh, uh, how simple things look. Uh, on uh, we kind of seeing it uh, along the along the axis. I'm not I'm not sure. Just to remember what what the data was initial uh, initially here. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, let me just take the the picture. And uh, and once again, the uh, the derivative with, uh, rel uh, along these. Well, the rate of change, let's just say, uh, along these uh, uh, axes will be uh, will be zero. But uh, but in fact, the the function is not only dif not differentiable, but it is in fact uh, discontinuous. So uh, so I mean, it is discontinuous because it's undefined at zero. So so strictly speaking, we have a hole here. 
uh, but um, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, partial derivatives will be okay, but it's not enough for us to conclude that the function is uh, differentiable, and differentiable is what we just started doing is when it has a, a, a linear approximation. Remember, the idea is the tangent plane. So you can imagine that there is no way you can you can find in a meaningful way over here somewhere, or maybe if, if I take that picture somewhere uh, on that at the end of this promontory. I like that word. Um, uh, there, there, there is a, there's a tangent plane. So you try to imagine there's a tangent plane there, and uh, uh, because of the gap, uh, but primarily because of the vertical drop. Because of the vertical drop, you you cannot have a meaningful uh, tangent plane here. So the function is poorly behaved in that sense. Um, okay, so so let's let's resume here with the uh, with the linear approximation as we could have done in in, in, in calculus one, and we kind of did it in uh, in, in calculus two. Okay, so, so once again, we, uh, we approach the whole uh, problem from a different direction. So we're looking at uh, best linear approximations of, of uh, uh, so, okay, so that, that is the, how it was done. This, this is uh, where, how it could have been done. So uh, we, we're just talking about linear approximations that, uh, first of all, is a linear function. Secondly, it, is, it passes through, uh, through this point, so all green lines are satisfied, and there, in fact, uh, you can say that at least some of them are secant lines. Okay, so secant lines could be seen as, as, a, as linear approximations of our function, okay? Uh, and, the, and, the, and then we, instead of talking about the limits of, 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 of secant uh, lines, um, instead we talk about the best among all the lines, including the secant lines. Uh, and the, this is the condition that makes, makes it best. So you subtract the difference uh, between the two, not only equal to zero at, at zero, but also even if you divide by x minus a, absolute value, uh, it, it, goes, it goes to zero. So that's what make it, uh, so that's, that's the definition, okay, definition, a linear, approxim linear approximation, uh, the best, uh, the best has to satisfy y uh, this condition. Okay? And, and then there's a theorem which uh, uh, appears in, in, in calculus 2. Um, well, so do, you, do you remember that theorem? So the best. So if, if. So if our f is differentiable at x equal a, then uh, its best linear approximation is what we already know it is, except we started from a different direction, so it's at the top. So uh, L of x equal to f prime of a, x minus a, plus f of a. Okay? So it's a linear function and with the slope equal to the derivative. Okay, so derivative is the best choice for all uh, among all linear approximations. So do uh, you remember this theorem? It's a part of a bigger theorem called, maybe if you remember the name. Taylor's theorem. Taylor. It is Taylor, uh, about Taylor polynomial. So this is the very first part of the Taylor Taylor theorem about linear approximation and we're also you can say it's T1, remember, so uh, Taylor polynomial of degree 1, okay? Uh, okay, so, so the advantage is, uh, um, uh, to begin with, uh, is, uh, is the, um, uh, the limit that we, we do not define the derivative as a limit anymore. We already know that we, we run into trouble with, that, with this, we did. Remember this? Uh, if we try to do a function of several variables, then we, we end up dividing by, by a vector which is not allowed. Uh, but instead, then, we are not defining derivative as a limit, but rather define uh, the derivative as, as, as something that is satisfies certain properties. So we start with linear approximations. The idea of tangent line or tangent plane is more or less clear. And then uh, uh, the, it turns out that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. And similarly, we already know the answer of what if we're doing a, a, a tangent plane. Uh, we're not going to change a lot here. Uh, and the answer will be simply instead of having one slope 
over tangent line, there will be two slopes because it's tangent plane. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's very simple. So we have point AB here. We already did this, but we could just, just as well uh, do it one more time. So you have a, 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 a z equal f of x, y. Uh, the point we are concentrating is here. Okay, so, and then, uh, and then, uh, uh, so we, we, this is what we're trying to find, like this. Uh, a plane that resembles the, uh, our surface as much as possible. Okay, and so, and so then the definition of, uh, of a linear approximation is the same, it's simply planes that pass through this point. Okay, so, okay, so once again, uh, so we're moving on to dimension two. Very, very, every, everything is going to be very simple. So our uh, linear approximations are tangent, uh, second place. Summations are, say, L of X, X, Y equal to, uh, they, it will be, remember that form of the, uh, a point slope form of a plane. What does it look like? So it's very similar to this one. No, no, not that one, not that one, but rather what I'm trying to refer to is this one. Point slope form formula of a, of a plane. So the point A B here and this point is by the way F of A B. Okay, so what's what's the formula? the derivative in the x direction? No, that, that, that will be once we find the best. I'm talking about just linear approximations, period. Oh, oh. So all, uh, we, I'm, I'm talking about all planes that pass through that point, all planes. And then we pick the best one of them. Um, M. M. I minus, minus yeah. Plus N times Y minus P. Plus F of A. Right. So point slope. Point right there and two slopes. That's the only difference. So we have we have two slopes. <coughs> okay, so and it is a linear function. The, the graph is a plane. We know that uh, uh, we know that. And then, uh, but it might not be the right one. It could be it could be any slope in any, in any direction. Uh, it, it has two degrees of freedom, and it could be sloped uh, in, in various ways. So and then the theory once again a kind of a, a Taylor type. Well, I, I I I haven't stated the definition yet. So the best linear approximation. Uh, satisfies. You can get that limit at the top will be very similar. So here I'm, I'm talking about a limit x y going to a b. Okay. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the numerator will be simply the difference of these two functions. So it, we do we are trying to evaluate how well our uh, function l approximate function f. So we said we're subtracting them just like with lines, and uh, what do we get in the denominator? Uh, the, the magnitude. Of the magnitude, yeah. Uh, X y minus a b. So it means that we step off. We step off our uh, point A B in any direction imaginable. Okay, so in any direction we st step, or maybe in this direction. Okay, so this will be X Y, and then then the denominator is this length of the red uh, interval. Okay, and and then and then we are comparing. Uh, in the meantime, we are comparing the uh, <coughs> the. So if I take this up. And this point will be on the graph, and then there's a curve here like this, and then what? This is what we are comparing. Uh, the numerator will be this. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, no, I didn't quite do it right. Okay, so uh, let me uh, draw a new plane here. So, uh, so the picture that is, so what you see so far is the picture of 
of my uh, function, okay, and uh, uh, one point, the overall a point of interest, okay, so we are stepping off a uh, point of interest AB to point XY, uh, measure using the uh, distance formula, uh, measure the, the distance uh, in that direction along the, uh, on the plane, okay, the, and, and that's the numerator, and the denominator will be the difference, and this time not absolute value, but the difference between the value of the function, which is over here, uh, so this, this will be the other point, and in our plane, and the plane is, will be, let me try to do it, reasonable job here, well, something like this. So that might be our plane, which is still might be um, the, just a, 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 a second plane. So we don't know. It, it might dip below or above the, uh, the plane. And then, but then it is a function, so it has a value uh, here somewhere. Maybe like this. Okay, so then this is uh, the numerator. So the denominator is at the bottom. It looks, the formula looks very much like the, uh, uh, the slope formula, rise over the run, or, or the change of the output variable or the change of the input variable, except because we're talking about the vectors here, we have to make, we have to make, uh, have to look at the magnitude of, of the run. This is the magnitude of the run. This is the run. This is the magnitude of the run, because we want to divide by it, so we are forced to, to put it in the, uh, um, in the magnitude, uh, uh, in the magnitude, and, we'll need, uh, and then the, num the numerator is uh, numerical, so we're just subtracting uh, this one. So uh, that point, the black point, is on the uh, on the uh, plane. Okay, maybe like this, like this, like this. So the, the, it is on the I'm sorry, on the curve. The black point is on the curve. The, the purple point is on the plane, and we are looking at how close they are. Okay, so that divided by this. Okay, so that's that's what we have. And uh, and then uh, uh, and then the theorem we also already have. So no no trouble. We are just following the footsteps of, of calculus one and two. I have my theorem um, of that theorem that is still visible. So I have my theorem. So um, well slightly different. Actually, it is a part of the definition rather than anything else. Uh, and we have to add these words uh, when L exists, F is called differentiable. At A. So differentiability is not defined in terms of derivatives, so partial derivatives. It's defined in terms of linear approximation. So in other words, if there is such a thing as a tangent plane, then the function is called differential and vice versa. So, so that way we do discard any kind of nasty behavior such as this. Okay, and then, and now we have the, our theory. So if, assuming the function is already differentiable, then what is that, uh, what is the linear approximation? And the answer is, is simple. Uh, so, so suppose f is differentiable, uh, is equal f of x y differentiable at a b. Uh, then uh, l x l x y. Now uh, everything is specified. The only those two degrees of freedom m and n. Now they are replaced with the specific functions. And, uh, 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 and, well, that doesn't change. And, uh, m x minus a plus n y minus b plus f of a b is the best linear approximation. Then, we can write what those those are. M is equal to the derivative of df dx uh, at a b, and n is equal to df dy at a b. So 
It is just a matter of notation and using the curly, uh, uh, curly D's, uh, the derivatives <coughs> with respect to x and y at uh, x y at a b uh, called partial derivatives. So you can you can then write uh, d of dx at a b is equal to uh, what is it? It is uh, d dx. Okay. So so that this is I'm writing the definition of partial derivative. So the the way, the way I explain it with words now I'm explaining with formula. So I take my function f of uh, x b, which makes the function of one variable of x and differentiate with respect to x. In that sense, this differentiation symbol is, is what we have in calculus 1. And then we have a similar array for the other one. So once again, I kill one of the variables by fixing it, uh, and then uh, uh, and differentiate with respect to what's left, the other variable. Okay. So that's, uh, that is the result. The, the proof is really uh, very simple. Um, uh, so we would have to take, uh, the, the proof would be uh, uh, um, to demonstrate that indeed if, if I pick this linear approximation, this linear approximation turns out with these coefficients, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, there, there's something I have to add here, x equal to a, y equal to so once you're done computing, once you're done computing uh, the different, uh, different derivatives with respect to x, you have to still choose x equal to a. That that way you get the derivative of the function at that point. So you let x be variable, but once you've done differentiation, you uh, you have to you have to fix the value of x. Uh, let me maybe let me run one example before before doing anything more. Uh, profound, uh, just, just uh, it doesn't take a lot, I get used to, to partial derivatives, uh, but it still has to be done. So, uh, so suppose uh, let's uh, find the best uh, any approximation. Change the plane as well, same thing. <coughs> of say z equals f of x y. Well, let's pick a couple of points x y over hyperbolic paraboloid in a circle. We'll start with zero just to uh, to confirm the computation is is, is, is is very straightforward. So at zero, and then we pick another point, say one one. Maybe. Okay, so uh, uh, so once again, I convert my function into uh, into the function of, of one variable. Uh, so, uh, so d of dx at 0, 0, so I put d dx, put here in big parentheses, I put my function with uh, y replaced by, by 0, what do you know? And once I'm done, I plug in x equals 0, well certainly it will, will be simply 0, okay? So, uh, so nothing, is, no, no differentiation is happening because the function is so simple. Okay, so we already knew that, and then uh, uh, with respect to y, it is the same story. Uh, 0 times y, y is equal to 0. And once again, the answer is 0. Okay, so, uh, uh, so as that, 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 that these two give me the cross. Give me the cross. Uh, and uh, 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 so the slope with in, in the x direction is 0, the slope in, in the y direction is 0. Already from that, you can conclude what the answer is. Uh, but uh, if you want to use the formula uh, from the uh, from our theorem, uh, then as you can see, uh, it is simply the um, well, a and b are, are, are zero, a and b are zero, uh, f of a b is also zero. So so these are the coefficients. So my 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 uh, plane and my linear approximation will be. Uh, oh, let me write it down anyway. F of a b. I think I'll just write the answer. So it will be, no, that's it, it's zero. It just take, takes longer to write it. Um, so 
because uh, x minus a will not be there and will, because multiply by zero and y minus b is not there because it's zero. So that is uh, um, just too simple to uh, to dwell on, but uh, uh, it is kind of interesting uh, if, you, if you think about it, if we take our uh, paraboloid, if I just remember where it is, uh, this, this here is the one, and indeed that uh, the tangent plane is, is the horizontal plane, uh, the, the uh, x-y plane is, is the, uh, the tangent. Okay, so even though it, it sticks out, if you look at the picture again, uh, it sticks out some, so it's the two quarters of the of the graph sticks out above the that part of the saddle above the x y axis plane and the two ones for the legs are below the x y axis okay so that purple one goes down and the blue one goes up okay and so let, let's take another point so just to produce some uh, 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 the answer that is uh, not as trivial so I take one one so my a is one b is one f of a b is also one. Okay, so that's my function. Uh, now let's do differentiation. d of dx at one one is d dx. What is the function? x times one. x times one. Uh, x equal one. So it is one. d of dy. 1, 1, by definition, we differentiate with respect to y. What do we differentiate? We get rid of the function of two variables, make it 1. So it will 1 times x. And, and x, uh, I'm sorry, y. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, So we just have to be specific about what the, we replace that variable with. So the, the missing, the, the variable that we don't want really to deal with, we replace it with the uh, fixed value. So either we, we start with this and continue with that, or other vice versa. So I replace, uh, that's A, and this is B. I replace uh, X, uh, Y with B, and then, then uh, in, in the next line, line I replace uh, uh, X with A. Okay, and so same, same story, I still end up with uh, one. So then the answer is, substituting this business into, into my uh, function will, will give me 1 plus x minus 1 plus y minus 1. Point slow formula. Point, uh, point is uh, 1, so the value of z is 1 in that, in that location, so I'm looking at, uh, at 1, 1. Here somewhere, that blue part, that blue part, the uh, light blue part, that's, that's where, where we are. We, uh, the settle point itself at 0, 0, and there we are step, uh, stepping off. Uh, in that direction, and uh, and then uh, at the point we're passing through is one one uh, on the x x on the x point y plane, and this is the formula. You can certainly simplify it. It will be uh, what is it x plus y minus one. Uh, so uh, it is like 45 degrees, kind of a uh, well, it is, well, we've seen this. It's like a triangular tri triangular thing thing pointing pointing down uh, uh, from the origin. That's that's what. Uh, 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 so z equal to this. So it will have, if you, if you try to understand what it looks like, uh, it is uh, uh, the, uh, when x, y are equal to 0, it is equal to negative 1, so it lies below the x-axis, and then, and then, uh, uh, and then it has, uh, if we are now, uh, we have the x, y plane, uh, um, hold on a second, what was I was talking about? I was talking about, uh, no, it is equal to zero when, when uh, what, what is it on the xy plane? What is it on the xy plane? On the xy plane is where z is equal to zero. So uh, I'm talking about then the horizontal, um, uh, the uh, level curves. Okay, so, so then if z is equal to zero, I end up with x plus y minus one equal to zero or uh, y equal to uh, 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 one minus x. Okay, so, so it cuts a straight line on the x-y plane, if, if that, that's what, what you want to see. But, but then it goes above, and lies for the most part above the uh, x-y plane. So it protrudes, goes up in the, in the two directions at 45 degrees, which is, which is what slope 1 is. Okay, so the computations are not hard. We will do more examples of how, uh, of a partial differentiation with more complex functions. 
uh, as just just a technique that you have to um, learn. Uh, but at the same, in the, in the meantime, let's let's finish the uh, the this topic of, uh, uh, of of linear approximation. So that's what the be behind, the be beyond, and behind the quantum differentiation it are the slopes of, of our our plane, the teeny plane. Uh, this is the theorem uh, proving, I, I want to show you that this condition is not only has this uh, clear geometric meaning on the left, but also it is very easy to establish from the, um, uh, from the, uh, from the formula. So uh, let me point that out. So, so suppose L of x, y is f of x, y plus m x minus a y minus b uh, b y uh, n n y minus b so that is a suspected uh, uh, that's linear approximation okay the, and we plug it into our formula so it's does it satisfy does it satisfy our uh, our limit uh, and the limit is uh, once again it's l of x y minus f of x f of a uh, x y I'm sorry, this is not xy, this is ab. It is a linear function after all. Okay, uh, f of xy divided by the magnitude of uh, xy minus ab. Okay. xy goes to ab. <coughs> okay, let me plug it in. So if I subtract and then uh, just try to uh, arrange things uh, appropriately and uh, um, well, uh, actually, this is how I'm going to proceed. I'm going to proceed uh, to apply that theory that, that we talked about in the beginning, and that is if the limit exists, we know that it is exists, that, the, that is the assumption, equal to zero, so that's a given. And now it means that according to that theory, we could, we could go one direction at a time. So, so then, by the theory, we have first, I now go along the x-axis only, then I have the limit of x goes to a, l of x b minus f of x b over, and now uh, what, what does the denominator give me? Well, let me, let me write it out. It will be uh, x b minus a b. Okay, so, uh, and it is still equal to zero. What, uh, what happens to the denominator? The distance between x, b, and a, b. It approaches zero. It is approaching zero, but you, you can actually, I don't want to, uh, it is approaching zero, yes, but uh, uh, yeah, I can I can simplify the expression. So just the magnitude of x minus a? That's right, x minus a, because uh, b, uh, y does not change, okay? And in the numerator, uh, I, I substitute what I have over there, and I have f of uh, a, b, <coughs> Uh, uh, yes, uh, minus f of x, y plus m x minus a. And the last term disappears. And y minus b disappears because, once again, y is equal to b. Okay? So, uh, we'll finish this next time, but uh, things really fall into, into your lap uh, once, once you do one variable at a time. <coughs>